Greetings, this is Amy Wentley with Chai Knuckles Knitting, and this is episode 2022-13, The Teal de Mittens, How to Begin with Magic Loop. I'm teaching a class on the Teal de Mittens, and this video will show how to get started doing these mittens with a magic loop method. Now the magic loop method is a way to knit small circumference articles like mittens or socks or sleeves for instance, and instead of doing them on double pointed needles, you can do them on a long circular needle. So this is a 32 inch needle. You can use a 40 inch needle if you'd like also. And the extra cord gives you leverage to be able to move the stitches around so you can work in that small circumference. So the pattern instructs us to cast on 32 stitches, which I have done here. The first thing I like to do on a magic loop project is to place a marker on the last stitch I cast on. So this is my last stitch I cast on. This is my tail. This is the working yarn that is attached to my yarn. Um, I did a long tail cast on, so these are both here. If you used a knitted cast on, your tail is going to be back here and your working yarn is going to be here. So I'm actually attaching a, a locking stitch marker to the stitch that has my working yarn coming out of it. This is going to mark from now on the end of a round. So just bear that in mind, that's our marker. So to get started with Magic Loop, you're, what you're going to do is put half your needles, half your stitches on one needle or and the other set of stitches on your front needle. So you'll have two sets of stitches, not necessarily half and half but you'll have part of them on the back needle and part of them on the front needle. In the case of this pattern, we're going to have 15 stitches on our back needle and eventually down the line, those are going to end up being the cabled portion of our mitten. So they're going to end up being this part of the mitten. And then we're going to put 17 stitches on the other needle and those are going to be the stockinette part of our mitten. Okay. So what we want to do to get started with Magic Loop is we want to move all our stitches down to the cord. So they're all now on the cord. And I want to have, for this mitten, 15 stitches that are going to be on the end of round part of my needle so where my marker is here, and I'm going to want 17 to be on this part. So I'm going to count 15 stitches, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And at that point, between 15 and 16, I'm going to separate the stitches and I am going to pull this cord out between those two stitches. And it's okay if it stretches this here. That's fine. And I'm going to start to pull that out and then I am going to orient my needles so that my needle with the stitch marker on it is going to be in the back. So I'm going to turn them this way so that this marker is in the back. I'm going to call this the back and this the front. And we're going to be turning around as we go so the front and back are actually going to change at various points. This is my end of round, and right now my end of round is in the back with my working yarn coming out of it. I'm going to slip my stitches on the needles, and I just want to orient you. So before you start any part of a round on Magic Loop, you want to have your stitches oriented so that the, the bumps are pointing each other pointing to each other here. Um, you want to have the working yarn coming out of the needle in the back. It should always be that way. Your working yarn should never be coming out of the front needle. If it is, you need to turn things around so that before you start around, your working yarn is coming out of the back needle here. At the beginning of a round, the working yarn is going to be coming out uh, on this needle that has the end of round marker because this was the end of round and we're going to be starting to do the beginning of the round here. <clears throat> so
So when you have things all settled like this, go ahead and pick them up so that they are parallel, so that you're looking at them like this. Okay. So just to kind of explain what's going on, your working yarn is on the back needle. You are going to work this stitch on the front needle using this working yarn. And this is actually where we're going to be joining to work in the round this time. So all my stitches are on the front needle waiting to be worked. And I need a needle to work them with. So where I'm going to get the needle is from back here because it's not being used right now. It's just holding these stitches. So I'm going to pull this needle out and I'm going to let these stitches slide onto the cord. When I do that, I now have a needle free to work with. The next thing I want to do before I start knitting is if I'm going to be doing a knit stitch first, and I am in this case, we're going to be doing knit, purl, knit, purl. If I have a knit stitch first, I want to take my yarn, my working yarn, and I want to have it coming over my front needle, ready for me to work a knit stitch. This is going to be keeping the yarn out of the way, and it's not going to get caught in the loops in my big circular needle here. So I'm going to go ahead with this needle, work a knit stitch. So I'm putting the stitch in, putting the needle in as if to knit, and I'm going to wrap this yarn around the needle and pull it through. Whoops, I'm sorry, that's in your way. Pull it through and drop it off the needle. And right here you can see I have just joined the back to the front. That's how I join to work in the round. And then without twisting because my ribs are all straight and they were all facing each other. So I am set. Um, I think it's easier to knit, join to work in the round on Magic Loop than it is on double pointed needles. So um, that's one advantage. So we're going to be working knit, purl, knit, purl, rib for these 17 stitches at the front. So for the rest of these stitches on the front needle, I'm just going to be working them just like um, any rib on these this front needle. These stitches on the front needle are the ones that are being worked. And you'll notice my cord, my loop, is over here and it's not bothering me. And I'm just um, knitting away on that front needle with the ribbing. Knit one, purl one. So bear with me while I get to the end of this needle and I'll show you what happens then. And when you're starting with Magic Loop, I suggest just taking it slowly. Don't do anything quickly or rashly, um, just, but just think it through. Think about what you're doing and why you're doing it. So we're finishing these stitches on the front needle. When we finish the stitches on the front needle, we are only halfway done with the round. You'll notice my end of round marker is not here at the end of the front needle. So that tells me I am only halfway through my round. So I got to the end of the front needle, or I am about to, okay. So I'm about to get to the end of my front needle. And now I have an empty needle again. So just take a deep breath for a second and figure out what you're going to do. <clears throat> now that you have an empty needle, what you want to do as a first step is to get all your stitches on needles again. So go ahead and pull your cord this way and get these needle, these stitches back on the needle. And then you're going to take the whole thing and you are going to turn it clockwise, I guess. So you want to turn it so that you now have the end of round stitches, the one with the marker for the end of round, on the front needle. 
and you have the stitches you just completed on the back needle. You can see how there are more stitches done on the back needle than there are on the front. So that's one clue to you that you have not finished the round. <clears throat> also, your working yarn is now coming off the back needle. Remember I told you your working yarn is never going to be anywhere else but coming off the back needle. If for some reason you have something like this going on where your working yarn is coming off the front needle, that means your work is inside out and backwards and you need to orient things, turn them right side out, right side in, so that your working yarn is coming off the back needle. Okay. So remember when I told you the last time you needed to make sure that your yarn was up over the front needle before you started the next round when you were doing a knit stitch. For a purl stitch, your yarn needs to be under. Okay. If you get that mix, mixed up, you run the risk of um, creating a yarn over at your join, you'll be adding an additional stitch. So when you're, you're going to be purling now because the last stitch on this round over here was a knit, so you're now going to be purling. So we have all our stitches on the front needle ready to be worked, but we don't have a needle to work with. So where are we going to get the needle? From the back, right? So we're going to pull that needle out again, and now we have a needle to work with and we're going to insert our needle as if to purl this time because this next stitch is a purl. We're going to come under our needle and wrap around and pull through and that is going to be a purl stitch. Okay. Now I just want to show you that <clears throat> I told you to leave your yarn under the needle and I said start the purl stitch and reach for your yarn under the needle. If you reach for your yarn over the needle and go to do a purl stitch, you're going to make a yarn over and the yarn over is there. See how that's a funky looking, there we go, that's your yarn over there. You have an extra stitch. If you do this by accident, when you come around the next time, you can drop that yarn over off. It's going to be a little loose between the needles, but it's better than having an extra stitch in there. So just be aware not to do that. So one more time, when you're going to work a purl stitch next, you want to have your yarn, get your needle all out and untangled from your yarn. Make sure that happens. You want your yarn to come underneath the needle and insert as if to purl and then get the yarn. Don't get it from in here, get it from underneath here, purl and pull through. And that's a purl stitch. And now we are joined here between the two, between the cord and the needle here. And now we can work the rest of this round in ribbing. So my next stitch is going to be a knit and I'm just going to work across knit, purl, knit, purl and I'll show you again um, how we will start the next round. So we are now ending the first round. We know that because we are coming up to our end of round marker here. And if things get a little tight here, because sometimes this last stitch gets a little bit tight because it's been on the cord, you can pinch your cord together here and move the stitches up. It loosens that stitch up a little so you can get there. So what was I doing? Okay, purl. And I will now show you what happens when you get to the end of the round. So nice of you to be here today watching me knit. I'm almost at the end. 
And so now I know that I come to the end of round marker that I have finished around. And purl my last stitch. And so that's one round of knit one purl one ribbing that's done. So I get to the end of the round and I have a free needle now. So the first thing I want to do is get the stitches back on a needle. So I'm going to pull through like that. So now my stitches are on the needle. Got that. And then I want to turn the whole business counter or clockwise. And so now I have my end of round marker at the back with the working yarn coming out of it. That means that I am ready to start a new round. So just one more time, <clears throat> I'll show you how to do this. Um, you know that your working yarn is coming out of the back. You know you want to work the stitches on the front needle. You need a needle to do that. So you're going to use the back needle to do that. You're going to make sure that your yarn is going over the top of the front needle since the next stitch is a knit stitch. You're going to knit the next stitch. Just get your yarn again and knit that first stitch. And there you go. And the reason I'm telling you to get that yarn up out of the way is so that it doesn't get stuck in your loops here. That's kind of annoying. So once you, I'll show you this again real quick. Once you get that yarn up and out of the way, so it's just up and out of the way, you put your needle in and then you can grab the yarn again and work with it. Okay. I'm going to continue now to work the knit one purl two ribbing around and then that will end this video. Um, the next video is going to cover how to do a make one L, a make one R for the setup round and then it's going to cover how to do the cable stitches for the mitten. So thank you for viewing this video today and I will see you back for the next video. Bye-bye.